Section 2.3, grouped data or data, your choice. All right, so previously in 2.2, we talked about um, finding the standard deviation for lists of data, uh, very small lists. Now we're going to have much larger ones. We're gonna have two varieties. We're gonna have ones where they'll make a table that says the number five appears eight times, the number six appears 12 times, yada, yada. That will be called a frequency distribution. As it says there, in a frequency distribution, the data is listed along with the number of times it appears. And the other variety is a grouped frequency distribution, where you are given a range for each data value, along with a number of items in each group. So for instance, it could say one to 100. There are uh, six things that are one to 100. So it has the group, and then it has the number of items in that group. The formal name for the groups are called classes. Now before we get any further, let's actually look at a numerical example. Scratch, 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 scratch. I got itches. So on the left-hand side there, we got a frequency distribution. And notice in the first column of the orange one, we have the values. Notice the variable x. So the values are 1 through 5. And the frequencies are 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now those numbers are all random. But what that would mean is that the number 1 appears 3 times. And the number 2 appears 5 times, so on and so forth. So to make sure this is understood, oh no! Oh no, don't look at that slide! To make sure this is understood, I'm going to write out what this means. So another way that this first set could have been written was they would write the number 1 three times, they would write the number 2 five times, they write the number 3 six times, Oh my gosh. Four repairs seven times. Uh, I hope you get the idea. This is hurting my soul. And five appears eight times. Uh, I'll put the commas in later. Boop, 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 boop. So they could have given you that set, one through five there and said find the standard deviation like we did in the previous section. However, instead they provided as a table, because notice table is much easier. And if you could imagine if those numbers were, um, if those frequencies were higher, uh, my beard would be longer by the end of the video and I got other things to do. So that's the only difference is that they're grouping things together. And uh, the first one on the orange there, they're all like. Now in the second one, the grouped frequency distribution, notice we have classes, 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30, so on and so forth. All we know is that there's 12 items that are 1 through 10, 16 items that are 11 through 20, so on and so forth. The problem is, is that we don't know exactly what the items are. So we lose some information because of putting them in classes. So at best, when we go to do our standard deviation and go to find our mean, um, it's a guess. Um, it could be exactly right. It could be off by a little bit. Um, you'll learn later on about error and things like that, well beyond the scope of our course. But for both of these types of scenarios where you're given the exact values in the frequency or the class in the frequency, um, you will be finding the mean and the standard deviation in the section. Please make a note though, in the blue chart, there is no x. There's a class, but notice it does not set the variable x underneath it. So let's see and talk about what you would have to do to find the x in a second. But first, let's look at the uh, formulas for the mean and the standard deviation when they're grouped. Bink. So the mean and standard deviation of a frequency distribution, on the left, it's a small change to, well, it's a big change, to the mean. Remember, x bar is the mean of a sample. Big sigma, again, means the sum, and the numerator says it's the sum of f times x, meaning you multiply the frequencies times the corresponding value of x, and then add them all together. The denominator is the sum of all the frequencies. That's how that would be pronounced in, uh, in English, sigma f. 
for the uh, standard deviation. Got it. I'm okay. Again, slight change to the formula. Square root of f times x minus x bar, quantity squared over sigma of f minus 1. Uh, please notice in the denominator, you first add up all the frequencies and then subtract 1. So that should mimic the n minus 1 that we had in section 2.2. Now in this section, everything will be taught to you through Excel. I do talk about in the videos what if you wanted to do it by hand. Um, it's great exercise. You won't have to go to the gym after you've written everything down. But doing things in Excel, a lot easier in my opinion. Okay, so I think the next slide is a grouped frequency distribution. I don't know. It is not. Oh, it is sort of. So just as a comment here, for a grouped frequency distribution, you use the midpoint of each class to be the values of x. So notice I copied over the blue chart from earlier. And the midpoints are given there. To find the midpoint, well, let me back it up real quick. Let me change my color here because I don't want blue on blue. Boop. How is, I'll do purple. Okay. So again, these are called classes. The first number is called the lower class limit. The second number is called the upper class limit. To find the midpoint, you actually find the average of the lower and the upper class limit. So you do lower plus upper, divide by two. So if you did lower plus upper, divide by two, so one plus 10, I said that right, one plus 10 is 11, 11 divided by two is 5.5. And 11 plus 20 is 20, uh, 31, divided by two is 15.5, so on and so forth. So you would use those two guys, the, the new X that you just found, the midpoint and the frequency to find the mean and then later on the standard deviation. Now we've got a couple of videos here. These are heavy videos. They're longer. They're like 17 to 20 minutes. Uh, so I recommend some popcorn, preferably kettle corn. Everyone knows it's better to watch both of them. Frequency distribution and measures of dispersion and then grouped data and measures of dispersion. Um, and as always, let me know if you have questions.